Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a simple coffee cup with uh, some autumn leaves. I think it's going to be a really fun project for us today. I'm going to try to keep it fairly simple so it'll be a little bit easier for beginners. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Uh, hey there, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Know what that hesitation for. My uh, husband, yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Alrighty, so if you're new to our live shows, uh, you can ask questions during chat. I'll try to answer them. Uh, Mark's going to be there to kind of moderate and help out. So um, you can put your questions in all caps so you can see them. Um, uh, we don't answer all the questions, but uh, we'll try to get as many as we can in. I've um, been painting for, I don't know, about 30 years now. And so uh, we do these shows to kind of just um, help share my knowledge of painting with you. It's just the way I approach painting. It's not the best way, maybe, but it's uh, kind of just uh, really enjoy getting to share with you. So if you enjoy the show, you can give it a thumbs up and subscribe, hopefully. All right. I'm trying to change my intro, but that wasn't all that smooth. I'm going to have to figure it out. <laughs> Maybe I need to write it down. <laughs> Especially trying to figure out what I am to you. What exactly? Like, that's, um, yes, it's my husband. Okay. My guy friend. So my know. guy friend over there. My roommate. <laughs> my quarantine partner. <laughs> We've got a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. This is from uh, Frederick's Pro Series Canvas Board. Um, I've coated it with a um, just a thin coat of yellow oxide to get us started, just to give us an undertone. Um, I don't prep my canvases. I get questions about that a lot. I don't gesso them or do anything. They come pre-prepared, so there's no really reason to do anything to them um, except for just to uh, throw the paint on there and go. So um, thank you to Fredericks. They're our canvas sponsor, and uh, we love their products. I'm going to go over our paints really quick here. Got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone burnt orange, cadmium orange. Uh, this one is a new one that we haven't used a whole lot. Quinacridone nickel azo gold. Uh, but it's basically the exact colors of, the, of these leaves. So I thought, well, I'm just going to pull it out and use it. If you don't have it, just uh, use what whatever you've got that's similar. I'll try to mix up something um, that's similar for you if you don't have that color. Uh, Indian yellow hue, uh, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow light, uh, phthalo green, yellow shade, ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, and quinacridone magenta. And then this is unbleached titanium, titanium white, and zinc white. I had way, way more there than we're going to need. It just came out really thick. This is gloss glazing liquid. So if you don't have these exact colors, don't worry about it. Just use what you've got that's similar to what I'm using today. Um, the main colors that are like probably the most important is to have like a really good brown, like a burnt umber or burnt sienna, and then um, like the yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, and quinacridone magenta, and your ultramarine blue. Those colors um, will get you just about um, any anything we need to mix, but I like to use the colors that are already pre-mixed because it makes the shows go faster. Okay. I'm talking way too much at the beginning. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Uh, my brushes, I'm going to be using a 10 bright, a six angle in the, um, summit series of Princeton. And then the red handled brushes are their velvet touch line. I've got a three eighths inch and a quarter inch, um, angle, and then a, 18 aught short liner and a number one round. Those are just going to be for some of the veins and things in there. Some of the smaller details, the angle brushes will do most of the work for us. And then I've also got some texture brushes. So just whatever you've got, that's got kind of a stiffer texture. That's a um, little scuffy um, to do some of our textural things on like the mosses and the tree bark and things. So this is the three it's inch and quarter inch blender. And uh, I've got a three sixteenth inch uh, deer foot stippler. I'm not sure I'm going to use all these brushes, but I just grabbed what I thought I have not painted this yet um, ahead of time. So we're just going to work it out as we go today. That's how we do our shows. And it's always kind of an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I never know exactly how long it's going to take or what exactly I'm going to do, but uh, we usually work it out. Uh, Eventually, oh, as yes. we go. And so. it's fun. 
it is fun. Uh, and I've got a number two uh, large flat brush just to do some blending in this larger areas of the background. That's it. Uh, I also have a palette knife, but I'm not sure I'm going to use it, but I might use it for a little bit of the texture on the bark. So if you've got one of those, grab it. All right, let's get going here. Um, the drawing, I'm not going to go over the drawing really uh, much. I will have the traceable for you um, available, but this one's going to take a while. So I'm just going to get in here and paint it today. I'm not going to go over the drawing, sorry. Um, but the you can take a screenshot of the reference photo at the beginning of the video and trace it um, directly from there if you wanted to or um, use it to grid and you know grid out. I, I, if you haven't done a lot of drawing, I would say gridding is probably going to be your best bet um, to get started and there's a lot of really good drawing videos out there i've got some drawing videos um, to help you uh, with that so all right i'm going to get a little bit of glaze and then i'm going to grab my yellow um, cadmium yellow light i'm going to start with my lightest area up here this this yellow back drop is a little bit darker than we want it to be up here in this corner so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of white and that will help um, make the yellow more opaque adding white to your yellow is really important especially for your like first layer now after that you can just go straight in with yellow once you've got like a lighter tone underneath but especially if you're trying to cover up a darker area you're going to need some white in there uh, yellows just don't uh, cover very well even if they're an opaque yellow like this cadmium yellow light is so I'm going to just fill in that corner and you can see how I just picked up the cadmium yellow light after I had that white down so it gets a little bit darker as it gets towards this bottom I'm just going to kind of blend across here try to get it looking oh, kind of soft and blendy and then I'm going to grab some of my more golden yellow this is the Indian yellow hue. And I'm getting it just on kind of this corner of the brush and that way it can kind of control it down here. And then this lighter color is still at the top. So that will kind of help them blend together. See how that works. Okay, I'm testing to see if you were paying attention to mm -hmm. the beginning of the show. See, uh, What's your background color? Yellow oxide. What did, did I say something different? I'm not going to tell you. What did I say? Because then, well, obviously I wasn't paying attention, so I was trying to make it sound like. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were saying that because I, because I didn't. Uh, yeah. Say the right color. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's right. So <laughs> get it right next time. I got it right. Okay. Yellow oxide. Yellow oxide. Yes, and then I'm going to get a little bit of this burnt orange here. That's going to be a more reddish tone. And I'm going to go right along that edge of the tree. I'm going over it a little bit. Make sure that you do this quickly. You want to do this before that color dries that you're trying to blend it into. So it does help that I have the this color on this part of the brush so that I'm able to Blend them out as I brush it on it's already kind of blended a little bit makes it a little bit easier okay so that's good I think I'm going to pull that out a little bit and just kind of mess up that area up there there's some sort of different things happening so maybe just kind of dab in with the corner of where that darker color is in a couple places add some different stuff happen in there and then I'm going to wipe my brush off and get most of the paint off of it. And then just the very lightly, this yellow is still dry, so, or still wet, so it's it's going to blend for me. If your yellow was dry um, or drying, then you might not want to do this. Um, you might wait and just go back over it later. But yeah, I'm trying to think of how you would do that if if that yellow dried already but I think that's good. Okay. Um, you can always go back in. So like say you had a line here and it was really obvious 
and this color was starting to dry and it wasn't going to blend for you. If it starts to dry, it gets really sticky and it'll stick to your brush and it can kind of clump up and things like that if you mess with it. So um, just let it dry completely. Get a hair dryer, dry it off really good. And then once it's completely dry, then you can go back in with another coat of this yellow. And once you get down to that line where you want to blend those two, you can wipe your brush off and do what I just did and just kind of blend that yellow down into this color. Um, but that's uh, that's one thing that you want to make sure that you're um, not messing with your colors while they're trying to dry. They will lift and do all kinds of weird stuff. So acrylics are, that's one of the main rules with acrylics is just once they start to dry, just leave them alone, let them dry. Let your layers dry in between really well. All right, so let's go ahead and just kind of base in some of our main colors here. Our tree is really dark, so I'm going to get the purple actually and use that in my darkest areas. A little bit of purple, a little bit of black, and a little bit of brown. Those will be like our darkest tones. And But I just want, I like to have that little bit of purple. It just makes it a richer black. Um, gives the these dark, dark areas just a little bit more character. You could always just do straight black, but... That doxazine purple is like your darkest color, actual natural color in your toolbox over here of colors. So um, using it for your instead of black or in conjunction with black is really um, something I like to do. All right, so just using this corner of my brush to get around these leaves a little bit. I don't want to have to paint them in but if you um if you wanted to you could just do this whole tree just do this background and do the whole tree and then draw in your leaves and your mug over the top that's totally fine if you want to do it that way this is a little bit more tricky painting around this um it'll take a little bit more time on initially but um for me it's just easier to start with it already drawn out on my canvas it goes faster for me while I'm doing these live shows time is everything when, <laughs> when it comes to these shows I already take way longer <laughs> than I want to with them uh, so anything that can give me a shortcut all right using some ultramarine blue now so as I get up towards the sunlight areas I'm going to add a little bit more blue and a little bit lighter colors this area down here is going to be the darkest part of our tree. And you can see where, like when I when I get to an area where I know I'm not going to um, be able to um, get to it before it dries, I just want to blend that out a little bit so I kind of fuzz out that edge a little bit. And then I'm going to go for, over here and work my way around this, this side before this end starts to dry. And by fuzzing out that, that edge there, I'll give myself a little bit softer um, softer border when we add our next colors in or when we try to add our colors back into that I won't have like this hard line if I left like a really hard line like this sometimes it can be like a little bit of a ridge there and it can show up underneath the paint or like when you do your top layers it you can like if it dries hard um, it just it's a little harder to to cover um, if you have these little hard edges so Would it be sharp? Because I don't want it to cut my eye. Is it moving around the, the canvas? Be quiet. <laughs> Just asking. Yeah. Asking for a friend. Uh-huh. <laughs> Keeper. Yep. That's the way I roll. <laughs> So how are you doing today? Good. Doing good. Yeah. I'm enjoying. I'm been looking forward to painting this one. Yeah. I think it'll be a fun one. Just getting a little bit more blue and some burnt umber here. And as I get closer to this mug, it's getting a little bit lighter. So yeah. Um I, I definitely in the mood for autumn now that we, we're getting cooler weather here. It's been nice. We've had a really pretty lucky wild summer here in Arkansas. 
and uh, happy spring to all those who are down south. Yes. Australians, friends. Mm -hmm. They're just coming out of their winter, right? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. So this means. Do you put out pumpkins in spring down there? Or is it, <laughs> I'm just wondering, is it like, did they put the pumpkins out in the spring when we, when we do our flowers? And I'm wondering how of that course. works. They, they, they have to follow the American timeline. Okay. All right. Well, so I was just checking. They bred their trees to have the leaves fall in spring. <laughs> <laughs> and they're bare during the summer. Got it. Got it. Well, I just wonder if the pumpkin thing is just an American thing or if it's something that they do all over the world. It's very it's very prevalent in America. And like fall equals pumpkins. So we're painting several pumpkins this fall. But I always wonder if it's something just unique to us or if it's something that's from And some places may have defiled the uh the sacred coffee with pumpkin flavors. Oh, Pumpkin spice latte, which reminds me of the bark box toy that this pickle got. We we got we get that bark box thing. Don't I? Don't judge. Don't judge. Yeah, I know. It's he's super spoiled. We just got a puppy, and yeah, I know. I never thought I would ever ever in a million years do that, but um, he loves it. So you know, we love it. Um, but his last one, he got a puppy spice latte, and it. it's pretty cute. <laughs> looks like a coffee cup and squeaker toy. Yeah. Yeah. But this looks like a nice plain black cup of coffee the way that yeah. God intended it. <laughs> you would actually drink this one maybe. Yes. Okay. Getting some brown, a little bit of unbleached titanium there. I'm going to get a little bit of blue. The blue and the brown together make a gray. And so I'm adding it to this color just to do down over here. This area is actually pretty, got a lot of lightness. So I'm gonna, as I get closer, more of the, and more and more of the lighter color to get closer to this edge. And this is actually lighter than this in our photograph. So this edge here is actually lighter than this orange color that's next to it. And this is actually pretty purple. It's probably more purple than I want it to look. So I want the purple to be a little bit more subtle than this, but I'm just going to go ahead and go right up along that edge and just get some color down. Any color is fine at this point. We're just wanting some color underneath to work with. If it's close to what we, I'm not trying to do the upper layers of the color. I'm looking at the tones that are in between in the cracks in the shadows. So that's what I'm doing here. It's just kind of picking a dark, darker color than what I want to end up with. And I'm going to grab some brown and just put it over the top of this while it's wet. So mix in. Okay. And as I'm pulling, I'm pulling in the direction that the bark um, is kind of the lines in the bark. So kind of going along this way. I know this is turned, so this the the bark lines are coming this way. So that's how I'm doing all my brush strokes here. And that way, if I get any kind of streaks, then we can that we decide to leave in there, then they'll be going in the right direction. They'll look kind of like we meant to do that. A little shortcut. Okay. Last little bit here. My paint's starting to get a little bit dry, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water and I can add a little bit of glaze too. The glaze will help kind of thin it out too to make it easier to work with. You just want it to be kind of smooth, buttery consistency. And if it's getting kind of stickier or whatever, then just add a little bit of water to your brush. Um, I think uh, that's one of the things that I get comments about a lot. You know, people say that they they're using more paint than I am, and I think a lot of it just has to do with the fact that their paints, their paints, or brushes are probably drying out as they work, and so they're not they're not picking up more water. And when I pick up water, I'm not dunking my brush; I'm just dipping the tip of it into there. Um, and I'm always working with a wet brush. So if if I didn't mention that at the very beginning. Um, 
you always want to have a wet brush unless you're doing a technique like a dry brush technique where you're wanting texture then you start with a dry brush but those brushes are usually these kind of stiffer bristle brushes that you don't mind the the paint drying up in them i hardly um if i use the dry a dry brush um, a regular brush to do dry brushing techniques and don't add water to it i always make sure that i do not get that paint down up in here because if you get um, wet paint into this dry a dry brush it's going to dry a lot faster up in here and it can dry out before you're able to um, clean it out so um, always uh, make sure that if you are doing a dry brush with one of your better brushes that you keep that paint away from your silver part and um, such okay i don't know why i'm slowing down here I'm just talking about brushes get painted i think this is going to be a quick one I said no. I, I'm I'm slowing myself down talking about stuff. But needless to say, you have four hundred and fifty something, four hundred and sixty videos. Videos. Four hundred and fifty one here on YouTube and then a bunch. another I don't know how many on Crowdcast. Yeah. Right. So you at every level of beginner to advanced and there's different tips and Yes. Techniques and all the different videos. Yes. So we try to cover as much as we can in each video, but it's impossible to go over everything. Right. So. Yeah. Some Sometimes I emphasize certain things. I'm trying to remember to kind of go over. In some of these more basic videos, I'm trying to remember to go over some of the basics for beginners. But um, if you're new to it, I would just kind of, if you're new to painting, I would just grab, you know, just get out your brush and practice get some paper you don't have to even use canvas at first um get a get a good quality um mixed media pad i've got links down in the description to the ones that i've used that i found to, to work well with paint and um okay so there this is a little bit more of a blue gray i'm going to get a little bit more of the blue and the i don't it's a little bit light a little bit more of the brown and the black. I think I really kind of mostly just want ultramarine blue, not a lot of that white. I'm just using what's left of my brush though. Got a lot of paint still on it, so I'm just gonna use it and I do have a few brush uh if you are brand new to painting, I do have a few like basic classes or basic videos that like on color mixing and about blending and things like that. So I would definitely check those out if you're new to acrylics. Um those will help you a lot. Um I've got one that's called blending with different acrylics and it goes over the different kinds of acrylics that you can use. So I'm using heavy body acrylics. They're gonna act a little bit different than like a craft acrylic. Or something like that. You've got it zoomed in too much, hun. Why is it always my fault? I'm the one zooming it. <laughs> <laughs> you're zooming it in, then you're going and doing other stuff and not paying attention. <laughs> I'm I'm saying hi to all your fans. Okay. Good. I mean, they're not really it's watching the video, are they? To see what I'm doing. Oh, okay. I thought they were here to say hi to me. Okay. Sorry. Too, probably. Sorry. That is silly. <laughs> All right. So this is going on a lot darker than we're going to end up with it, but... Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch to a little bit smaller brush. Just get around this corner here. And I'm going to get some of this yellow gold here and add it to this brush because this color in here is like a lot lighter. Add it to both sides. So.
So we have a few strange people in watching today. Strange people? Yeah. They would, um, and could you give tips on how to make it look like hot chocolate or tea oh. when you get to that point? Neat. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty much pretty similar, I think, um, because this whole area right here is just a reflection. So this is actually not the color at all of the, of the coffee. Um, this area right here of your darker reflection would probably be the part that would actually show the actual color of the coffee somewhat. And that's actually the sh a shadow area. So it would be the darkest tone of, you know, whatever drink it is that uh, you're using. But, but yeah, all of this part um, is, and of course your tea is not going to have the foam over here, but your, your, your hot chocolate would have that foam. So I think your hot chocolate would probably be pretty similar, maybe a little bit more brownish tones. And then the tea would be a little bit more golden tones in it, but yeah. Oh, uh, what did Ted Lassen call it? <laughs> what what did he call it? I can't remember. That's awesome. He's like, this is a joke, right? <laughs> you guys aren't really. You don't. You guys know that this is gross, right? It, it, He's drinking tea. It, it was something like pigeon sweat, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's our favorite new show. Sorry. Yeah. We like all tea drinkers. Angela, I love tea. Is is a tea snob? I very much a tea snob, and I made my so. child a tea snob too. Not realizing that when you feed your two year old tea, you know, good tea, that once he gets to be, you know, old enough to ask for it, whatever he's, and you give him Lipton, he's going to be like, uh, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, Nathan, yeah, Spencer. Spencer's the only one of my boys that really got the tea, tea drinking gene. That's because he was about two when I came home from France, and that's when I started drinking tea. I brought back a tea pot and some tea from France, and would make it in this little fancy teapot that had these little cups that were about that big. And he wanted, he was fascinated because he was so little, and he drank it with me. And so we, it was our fun mommy. Means some time, and now he's eighteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the dog <laughs> that uh, has got needed some someone else to mommy. All my boys are grown up. All right. Adding the gold to my leaves here, I used the um, Indian yellow and then grab some of that gold um, color. This is going. This is going to be a lot lighter than this, but um, again, we're going for the darker-ish tones. Um, I'm not going. I'm I, in this case. I'm going for the mass tone. So this, the main tone that I'm seeing in here is this kind of gold gold color. So that's what I'm going to put on here and let it dry. And then we'll add some darker shadows and some highlights to it. This will give us a head start on this. Just trying to work on the outlines of this somewhat. And I'll probably end up like, you know, going over some of this when we add the texture to our bark. So not going to worry too much about it at this point. I'm just wanting to get a little bit more color on the canvas here. And you can see where I'm trying to cover over that purple. It doesn't cover, so I'm just going to grab some of the lighter color, some of the unbleached titanium here, and it'll help make that paint a little bit more opaque. I'll just put it on a little bit thicker right there. It'll cover it up for me. go on a little bit kind of blotchy with this too because these leaves are not like 
I need to do that with this one too and kind of take off some of that extra color because these leaves are kind of got all kinds of blotchiness and different colors, distortion colors. So if I kind of just dab it on, I'll get kind of more of a mottled look to it. And kind of lost that edge here. Go. And this one over here is really light. Get some unbleached titanium here. This one in with a little bit of lighter tone. that yellow oxide is going to be a really good base to start with so you can see that gold coming through in some of these areas here. It's a really good undertone for these leaves. I get a lot of questions about like why do you do that like can't you just like paint the color on directly and yes you can but if you look at fine art painters you know any kind of really classic art and they always start with kind of undertones. Um, it really, inf it for it, the more layers that you have, the the more depth that you have in your painting. So it just takes it up a notch in the level of uh, craftsmanship. Crafts, craftsmanship. I can't say that word of your painting. You know, maybe that's not the right word, but. I mean, the level of maturity and whatever I'm trying to say, but it makes it look better. I think you were trying to say how awesome your audio and video guy is. <laughs> that was his answer. Yeah. He is pretty awesome. Yeah. Kind of cute. I have a little bit of crush on him, so don't tell. Don't be jealous. I surprised Angela by uh, taking a shower and putting on a real shirt before the show. <laughs> and cologne. And cologne. It's like, what? Is it my birthday? <laughs> 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 we are still on lockdown, you know. Nobody else is going to get to see this. <laughs> you already went to Walmart this morning, so. Yeah. Okay, using a little bit of the darker colors here, just grab some of the burnt sienna and burnt uh, orange here to go again, just on that corner to control where it's going. Just kind of put in it right in here and on a little bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's sad. I took a shower yesterday and I think it had been, I don't even know how many days. It was bad. This work it's from like home I really is pretty need, nice. It, this work from home is my my personal Hygiene has gone out the window. I, and I always work from home. That's the funny thing about it. It's like, it's not like I, something new, but something about you being home. It's like, I don't have to dress up for you. You're already here. Like, you know, I don't know why. It's just weird. Ditto. Pretty funny. It's like, I well, when I don't see you all day and that's the only time I see you, I'm like, I should probably, you know, kind of like comb my hair, you know, before he gets home. So it looks like I cared, you know, but like now he's like here all the time. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. He's <laughs> <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Getting some yellow here. Just adding some colors. I, I really shouldn't be doing too much to these right now. I'm kind of getting into it though. Sorry. I need to move on. Just get the colors down. I'm kind of getting into the details too much. Yeah, so I'm sure I'm sure we're not the only ones. Oh, I'm sure we're not. Okay. 
Yeah, and you know, she gave me the mandate a couple of weeks ago that I was no longer allowed to wear a white T-shirt that had stains on it. Yeah, he was wearing like the same three shirts over and over again, like he didn't have other clothes in his closet that were clean. <laughs> it's not like I could understand if you didn't have clean clothes or something, or like we'd run out of laundry detergent. And but I'm like, you have a whole closet full of really nice clothes, and you're wearing like this holy. No, stained. It wasn't holy. Yeah, just stained. Like, just stained. I throw them out and I see holes. And <laughs> they disappear. So yeah, this whole work from home now is getting a little stuffy. <laughs> Next I'm gonna have to be putting on shoes. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. I took one of the leaves out. You see in the picture there's a leaf here. I just did I just didn't want I kind of I don't know I just left it out so you can put it in if you want to but it's a little bit darker than this one here but uh, I just thought this is a five leaf cluster here and just thought that that was kind of a better arrangement myself so just taking some artistic liberties here it's your painting you do what you you do you that's so good you get people like you know, telling me how to paint my paintings. I'm like, you do you, dude. If you think you can do it different, do it different. It's not going to hurt my feelings, but don't tell me how to paint my painting. Like, I'm doing it the way I want to. There you go. That's it. So, you just kind of have to... People are going to tell you, you know. And And sometimes when you're learning, that's a good thing, you know. But you got to be careful who you're listening to. If you're listening to somebody that doesn't have ex more experience than you or isn't actually painting at all, but just, you know, is deciding that they're an expert on, you know, what you're doing wrong, then you may, you know, you may want to get your advice from somebody else because they're probably not going to be very helpful for you. Chances are they might harm more than help your artistic journey you know I have a lot of people that say they had teachers which I don't know why an art teacher would say this to a person but you know just saying that art wasn't their thing you know and just kind of discouraging them from practicing art which just breaks my heart because I'm like art's for everybody even if you're not great at it you should still do it you know just because it's good for you, it feeds your soul, it lowers your blood pressure, it helps you take your mind off things, it Keeps it's good for your mental health. It's in lockdown, especially right now, we need, we need stuff to take our minds off the state of the world. <laughs> this is definitely a good, a good uh, thing to help do that. If you're concentrating on this, you're not worried about your problems. I always, I always uh, say, I think God knew that we were going to need art. So he, <laughs> he's a God of creation, right? He, he gets it. <laughs> he gave us art to help express those things that we can't express other ways. Art, music, all that stuff. Writing, journaling. All right, there we go. So that one's a little bit more of that orangey tones. I really like these colors. It's really pretty. This is my grandma. These, these colors remind me of my grandma. This was her favorite color combo. Grandma Betsy. Orange and brown. <laughs> her whole house was decorated orange and brown. Oh, like your Pinto. Huh? Like your Pinto. Like my Pinto. I know. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, that was probably her favorite uh, car of mine. <laughs> she probably thought it was pretty awesome. Okay. So this is dry. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more to it. I, it's actually really good right now the way it is. So if you wanted to, you could just leave it. Um, I think I want to add a little bit of 
of some of the blotches of white and things that I'm seeing back here. So this yellow is actually surprisingly still viable. So I'm going to get a little bit of that yellow here. I can't believe it didn't. A um, little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, and some glazing medium. I'm going back to this large brush. Make sure it's clean because you don't want any of that purple to come off. And it's not clean, I can see. I'm going to have to clean it up a bit better. So for for those that are new here in 2020, we're right. just coming out of our summer break. Right. And so we're slowly adding Saturdays back to our routine. Yes. And over on Angela's channel after the show, if you click over on our channel, you can see the schedule for the upcoming videos. For October, yes. For October, yeah. Yeah, we just posted those, so. And that will be uh, 2 p.m. Central Time on Saturdays and 6 p.m. Central Time on Tuesdays. Yes. That'll be our standard show schedule. Yeah, and I don't think we have any changes to it in October. I think we're only doing... Uh, we're missing one Saturday, but we're doing shows all the rest of the rest of the days, all, my, all Tuesday, all the Tuesdays, and we're missing one Saturday because we're doing a yard sale. God help us. I'm still hoping that Angela changes her mind, but this needs it so bad. Our garage is terrible. We did a house renovation last year, and and then COVID hit, so we weren't able to. It ended too late in the year. It ended like in, well, it was October, really just November. before Christmas. Yeah. It was November. Yeah, it was just before Christmas. We ended the house renovation. So it was too late to do a yard sale then. And then we were going to do it in the spring. And then COVID hit. So we weren't able to do it. So we've just have a house garage full of our renovation items and things that needs to go, needs to go. So I'm going to try it. I've been having good weather, and it's probably going to be the like the hottest weekend of the month, you know, knowing us. Our luck will just be melting, but hopefully not. Hopefully no bad weather. Hopefully no rain. And hopefully we'll sell a bunch of stuff. I'm going to make everybody wear masks. Sorry. <laughs> Too bad. All right, here we go. So I just kind of mussed it up. You can see I just kind of added a little bit, little blitz, blips and blobs here. Got some of the yellow oxide, really all of the yellows that I'd already used back here. And just kind of, it, so if you prefer that kind of blended look that we had before, you can leave it that way. It's up to you. Um, this just kind of gives it a little bit more happening back here. I'm going to get some of the brighter yellow, add to it. This is just straight up yellow, or cadmium yellow light. And these colors are going to dry darker, so they'll go on looking kind of lighter, and then they'll, as they dry, the colors will deepen a little bit. So you keep that in mind when you're putting them on. And this this is with, with heavy body acrylics. Now with uh, craft acrylics, they won't, the color won't shift as much because they're mostly binder, so... If anything, they might dry lighter. But with the uh, heavy body acrylics, there's l n less binder, more pigment. And so as the binder dries, it's, the, it's white ish. When it dries clear, that darker pigment starts to show through a little bit more. Okay. Just going through here and kind of playing with this. That's good enough. All right, let's work on this. So this area right in here, I'm going to go ahead and use this um, gold color that we have and just add some of the color from the bark to it to so make a gray and I'm just going to use it to see that's just about the right color lightly now I'm, I'm kind of dry brushing with this even though I've got a wet brush but I'm just going to drag it along this little area here and create some texture along that edge 
barely touching down. Very little paint in my brush. Trying to let that canvas texture sort of grab the paint. Just dabbing it. And as I get up here, doing zigzaggy kind of lines. Let's go ahead and do some up here. This brush is actually doing a pretty good job, so I'm just going to stick with it. Just use whatever brush works for you. So if you if you have a way of doing this that you've found that works for you, just go ahead and do that, you know. All about figuring out your own style with acrylics, painting in general. Okay, so I'm talking to you, Alexa. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay, put lighter color right here. Just get a little bit more white in here. All right, I was going to do this with my other brush, but this one seems to be working well, and this is covering a pretty large area at one time, so I'm going to go ahead and keep on working it. I'm going to get a little bit of the... Um, quinacridone burnt orange here. I'll kind of add a little bit of a pinkish tone. I need to wipe most of that out of my brush. I'm feathering this to the very lightest touch possible. So, and I'm holding it kind of far back here so that I'm getting, I'm not holding it too tight. You know, if I'm holding it like this, I can't really get that light touch. But if I'm holding it farther back and just kind of letting it brush through, it's going to have a little bit lighter touch on the canvas too. Lighter hold on the brush. translates to the lighter touch on the canvas. Okay, this is actually looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and use this purple and yellow. Remember, I'm using this color, so this gold yellow. We can grab some more of that gold that's right here, right? And then mix it with the color that's on the bark here, and that's going to be a great light color. Somebody has asked, uh, what could they use as a color other than the quinacridone or orange? Um, burnt sienna and a little bit of quinacridone magenta make a similar color. Um, Cubes. And and uh, a little bit maybe of a, a red reddish, so either like a yeah, cad red light, cad red light or yeah. or a cad cadmium orange or something like that. Yeah, my notes, we had cad red light plus burnt sienna and then a little bit of quinacridone magenta. Right. I take notes. And the Indian yellow is very similar to this quinacridone gold color, maybe with a little bit more of a orangish or brownish tone. So maybe a little bit of burnt sienna plus the... Um, Indian yellow, if you have it. Indian yellow is kind of a golden. If you don't have that, then, you know, um, like a little bit of, of an orange with your yellow. And this is kind of turning out to be kind of yellow there, which I don't want it as yellow as that. So I'm going to get a little bit more of this purple tone. So uh, when is the next splatter video going to be scheduled? Because I'm starting <laughs> to feel like Dave is getting a little antsy. <laughs> Dave going through withdrawals? 
I think so, yeah. I don't know. Um, we're doing a poppy video in a couple weeks, so that might probably poppy field. We might do some spiders for that. Okay. I'm putting a little bit of tones down there, but I, I think that's a little too dark, so I'm just going to take a wet paper towel and kind of dab off some of that. So it's a little bit lighter. Okay. Not bad. Let's go ahead and grab the, these brushes now. Let's let's get the three inch Willows blender here. Let me get some more of this color, maybe a little bit lighter tone. So these colors are pretty light here. Like I said, the, the color that's right up against here is actually lighter than the background. So I'm gonna lighten up that edge a little bit more. Just get a little bit lighter color. And we're just gonna add layer upon layer and that's what's gonna give us that depth in our tree bark. So this again, doing it the same way, just kind of a little bit of brush, a little bit of paint on my brush and just letting it skim. And this area up here is a little bit, a bit darker. I'm gonna go ahead and get that kind of medium medium blue gray that had a little bit of that ultramarine blue in it and then let's get some ultramarine blue there's kind of a dark seam right in there comes down to the mug get some dark brown there we go add some of that And just kind of blending, buffing out those edges a little bit, so it blurs them out a little bit. There's going to be a bunch of moss right here too, so I'm just kind of going with the get it a little bit of the green now. Start adding some of those kind of greenish tones. Tab, tap, tap, tap. I'm laying it almost flat. I'm just tapping. Getting the ultramarine blue with the uh, cadmium yellow light and some of that green, the cadmium or the yellow, um, even way more yellow than this. It used to be kind of an olive color. There we go. I probably could have done without the green altogether and just done ultra blue and yellow oxide or cadmium yellow light for the moss. In fact, there's kind of a goldish hint too. So let's go ahead and add some of that. Indian yellow hue. Okay, that's closer right there to what we want. And then I'm going to grab some burnt umber here and mix that in over here. So I have kind of a dark version of this green. Just tap it in here.
Okay, get some of the burnt sienna. I'm gonna do some of that right in here. Okay, and then to add the highlight areas, we're just going to add white to this. This area back here is kind of been um, blurred out, so I'm just going to kind of blur the edges of these a little bit so they're not super distinct. As I'm putting them on, I'm kind of just rubbing side to side. But then as I get to where I want them to be more crisp, I'm gonna just dab and let those kind of more crisp edges be visible. Get some burnt sienna and some of this green and yellow over here. Do kind of a burnt brown and maybe get some of that purple color too do some of that yeah there we go this moss has all kinds of colors in it not just green if you start looking at it it's got all these different colors in it browns and golds and greens yellows Blending this out a little bit, just rubbing so that those edges are smudged. Burnt sienna, or sorry, unbleached titanium with this burnt sienna color here. I'm gonna just use it on the edge. Some of that brighter orangey or brighter green gold color, maybe a little bit of extra yellow in it. Your colors are going to be different than mine, so don't worry about that part of it. The color is not as important as getting your values right, so you know, you can fudge on the colors a little bit if it's not quite exact. I wouldn't stress over that part of it, but I would just make sure that you're looking at your values and making sure you're getting darks and lights where they're supposed to go. That will be the main thing. more of that base green now. So we've got the darker areas, we've got the lighter areas a little bit. I'm gonna go back in with my base moss color now and just kinda fill in. That.
A little bit more gold over here where that golden light's hitting it. Do you want me to go get some coffee? <laughs> Why are you needing coffee now that you're saying this? Well, I mean, no, no, I don't. I've I've had plenty for the day. <laughs> Probably too much in a lot of people's eyes. <laughs> they don't know. Well, I told you. You don't know me. I told people in chat, and, and when I write it, it I realize how excessive it is. <laughs> <laughs> How many, pieces, how many things of coffee have you had? Well, I started off this morning a little bit before six with mm -hmm. an espresso. Right. And then probably four or five cups of coffee. Oh, wow. And then another espresso just before the show. <laughs> you have a problem. I think we need to do an intervention. Is this the intervention show? <laughs> yeah, so I might need to go decaf if I can be drinking that much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A little bit. So here, again, I like noticing that this area up here is way too light. So just kind of getting some of that darker brown, adding that back in. Yeah. Not saying your your voice puts me to sleep or anything. <laughs> You have been known to fall asleep while I was talking, I have to say. That has happened. Truth. <laughs> because you're so relaxing and so comforting. Mm -hmm. So Usually it was when we were arguing, so that, that's always when it's not not a good time to fall asleep. I'm trying to make a point. And then you hear... <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I guess we're not talking about this right now. We can pick this up at five <laughs> at five o'clock in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> when you're awake and I'm asleep. <laughs> exactly. When I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> We never fight. I don't know what we're talking about. True. That never happens. True. That's right. <laughs> okay. Blue and white here. I still have all these other colors on my brush, so they're involved too. Just gonna highlight this patch right there. Pretty pretty. All right, let's see a little bit of this down here. This area is, it's actually pretty close to that color and value, so it's lighter. This blue is really pretty. It's 
So what I want to avoid is what I did right there where I kind of had an obvious pattern. So like you do like that and you've got this really obvious repeat pattern. And so when I do that, I just want to smooth it out or, or mush, mush over it so that that is disguised. You don't, you don't want that repeat patterns in nature um, are kind of more random often. And so you, you definitely don't want to have uh, that in your work when you're, you know, doing things in nature, leaves, flowers, whatever, um, trees, you know, if you have these kind of repetitive elements, it, it takes away from the realism because it's not really how nature works. It's pretty out there, unless it's like a real structured garden or something where it's everything is, you know, really precisely placed. But even then, there's randomness in individual trees and things. Branches. Adding some of this blue highlight right there. I love this. This is a really fun painting bark because it's kind of, you can kind of just go with the flow. It's, you know, obviously not exactly what um, you use in the photograph. I'm just kind of picking spots. This is burnt sienna, or I'm sorry, unbleached titanium here. And for stuff like moss, it grows in such random shapes and sizes, you know, you, yeah, you can try to almost exactly duplicate the the picture, but, you know, make it your own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as long as you get that kind of basic shape and, you know, structure right, then you can do whatever you want with it. Realizing this needs to be a lot lighter up here. Yeah, I'm going And the, another thing that you usually tell people that, you know, use the brush that they're comfortable with using. Right. So here you're using a blender. Uh, mm -hmm. or there's other brushes that someone could be using right oh, now. Oh, absolutely. A, a palette knife. It's just a stiff bristle know. brush, even just a flat brush of some sort. Right. Yeah, a palette knife would work. Well, there's green. I didn't really mean to put green right there. Let me wipe that brush out and get some of that blue I was meaning to get. This is that purple, blue, brown, black, whatever, that dark color. I just mixed up some more over there. The original color that we used in our background. I think we have some purple or some blue in the ultramarine blue. Yeah, a little bit of white. There we go. Just using that in this darkest area to add a little bit of hint of, you know, movement in it. I don't want it to be too too bright because this is in our shadow area, but there is going to be some light penetrating there just a little bit. It's all about layers, 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 so... Just lay on your dark colors, put on your highlights, add mid-tones, more highlights, put back in your shadows if you need them. Um, and then we can glaze our shadows in. So if we get done with this and we're like, you know, I wish this area was a little bit more brown, we can just take some transparent color and uh, maybe get my reddish brown here and then just go over this area with that color that's transparent and you'll be able to see the colors underneath, but it'll just ch change the tone just a little bit. So it's a really good way of like just adding little bits of detail to areas 
like this area here it's supposed to be dark right there there's like a dark scene that I met I lost so that scene there there's a little bit of darkness underneath the moss in some places so I'm gonna make sure that I go back in and like make sure that these have like a little bit of a shadow underneath some of these moss areas here where they're overlapping the rock or the not the rock the bark this is actually very similar to how you would do rock though paper scissors spock <laughs> Paper scissors box? Yes. Some of that unbleached titanium here. I'm just going to go on this edge here and add lighter tones. I'm not 100% happy with this color, but again, I can change the color pretty easily, so I'm not going to worry about it as long as the texture is going on right. And when I'm going around an object, I'm wanting to make sure that I'm kind of covering, going over it just a little bit. You can see my edges are a little bit mussed up because I don't want to end up with this. See how I've got kind of a dark halo around it right here. And I don't want that. So I want to go back up and go right up to that edge so that I've got color overlapping right there. It's pretty. It's working. Let's keep on adding colors. I would say you're going to want at least three layers to four or more layers on these, um, this bark. So just kind of keep that in mind. Get a little bit of the quinacridone burnt orange. I've got that unbleached titanium on my brush. I've got green. I've got all the colors in here. So it's just, again, not really the color so much as just getting the texture down. A little bit more of that burnt orange and bleached titanium. And then, oh, I got no green left. All right. Let's use this burnt orange with some green. You want me to run down to the store real quick? No, it's okay. You can mix okay. It. Right. <laughs> so, this is burnt orange with uh, green and yellow. Um, you can see how you can get achieve the, pretty much the same color with different, you know, in different ways. The last time I used ultramarine blue and 
and uh, Indian yellow. So this is very similar tone, very similar color. It's going to have just a little bit of a different vibrancy because they're starting out with different colors, but works. And I'm going to use a little bit of the burnt umber for the darker areas over here, making it dark. Wipe that out, and then I'm going to grab my Indian yellow, some cadmium yellow, mix that into this color to dull it just a little bit, and then make a little bit of white. And I think I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller brush here. This is the quarter inch. I'm going to use that to. Dab in some highlights. This, these ones down here are so close to us, we're actually seeing that kind of like individual little leaves, so, or fuzzes, so I'm going to be a little bit more deliberate and kind of like pull a little bit, so I'm getting like little fuzzy trails through this moss. Setting it down and kind of pulling slightly. Yellow, white, really bright. Yeah, just kind of wiggle my brush and just let little bits of the, and I'm twisting it kind of as I go so that I'm getting different parts of that brush touching down, and that will help the randomness we were talking about before. get too much I can always go back in and add more of the dark colors so don't be afraid of kind of playing with it okay then
Oh, and if I get a little bit too much, I'm just going to go back here, grab some of the starter color and just kind of blend it out a little bit. Conacridone burnt orange here, or no, conacridone gold here. A little bit more of the brown. And let that set. I might choose to do some more to it later, but I think for now the mosses look pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this color and add a little bit of blue and my unbleached titanium white. And I'm gonna just dab it in my bark. fuzzing out all of this by kind of going over it with a little bit of sort of a light wash of this lighter color, just lighter green gold to kind of fuzz out that edge. All right, that's good. Did we share our hot chocolate recipe uh, uh, before? Yeah. Uh-huh, we did in the, in the Facebook, Facebook group last that's, year. Okay, that's what I thought. It's a pretty awesome... Hot chocolate recipe. Man, we have the best hot chocolate recipe ever. It's really good. It will ruin you for regular hot chocolate. I'll just warn you, though. Mm. And it's a mixed hot chocolate. It's not like we're melting real chocolate that's probably better you know <laughs> but i mean we, we're not mixed. that ambitious huh we're not that ambitious no but this is a really good powdered hot chocolate mix and it's some of that darker color and i'm just going to add some of this hints of moss to some of these shadows areas Okay. Oh, I like how this looks. It's pretty. All right, let me get my angle brush here. And actually, yeah, let's do the mug first because this is over the top of it. Let's do our leaves last because it's they're the last thing. So make sure you got your your groundwork done for your background there. I might um, do one thing here before we start. This is dry, so I'm going to take some ultramarine blue here and glaze over 
some of these shadow areas with the ultramarine blue with thinned out, uh, just thinned out with glazing medium. And also you can add a little bit of the burnt umber if you want to, to make it a little bit more of a neutral, not so blue, in your face blue. But let's go over the top of what's dry here and it's going to let you do things like shadow, you know, shadow this moss down so that it's a little bit darker tone right up underneath that leaf right there. Um, right under over here, there's some darker. I'm gonna just use my finger to help tap it out if it gets too thick in some area, you know, really noticeable. This should be very subtle. And it should really kind of unify and tie in all these areas for you so it'll darken up your dark areas and, and then it'll just kind of blur the borders colors a little bit and as i get closer to this edge I'm gonna add more of the brown and i can darken up some areas so say i lost that shadow in there i want to darken it up i can just use a little bit more color Some mostly burnt umber here. Use the same brush and fill in the mug. The mug is white. It's going to pick up the colors around it. It's got a lot of gold in it. So I'm going to go ahead and use kind of some of this gold color here. I'm going to clean off my palette before I start on that. Because it's going to need its own thing. So we've been an hour and a half. So, okay. So while you're scraping over there, show them that. Oh, show them that little mask there. Yeah. Speaking of, I just threw it at you. Wearing mask, I forget. Wow, you're you are truly a mom. It's like behind her; she still sees it. <laughs> I knew it was true. Except for my ninja puppy that has silent paws. I swear, that dog we got a new dog and. Well, we've already talked about him multiple times, but everybody knows that by now, hopefully. But uh, he, he's he got half King Charles, half Ch Cavalier King Charles, and uh, these are the masks here. One of them, yeah. Where can they go? It actually is pretty cute on. They're really nice. They're stretchy. And uh, those are the ones that are sold on Teespring. I have over 100 masks with all the different paintings that we've done over the last couple of years in there. So it's pretty, pretty fun. I couldn't decide. So I just did them all. <laughs> just kept on adding more and more. Um, but anyhow, you know, the puppy, he's got like big old mitts and he's got fur all up underneath his paws. And so he's like in it's insanely like a, silent, like you like cannot cat. hear him. He is like a cat. Just like a cat. You cannot hear him walking behind you. Angela will be walking around and she'll 
be like, where is Fitz? It's like, he's right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I literally cannot feel him or hear him or anything. Mm-hmm. You might as well be walking on carpet. <laughs> All right, so I think that's about the tone. It's not pure white. It's not It's not actually super bright. Um, that may be even too dark or too bright. We'll see. Yeah, I think that's actually a little bit too bright. Said no one ever about Mark. <laughs> He's too bright. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> You need a little drum kit over there. Patachi. <laughs> the top hat. Is that what that's called? I almost said top hat. I'm sure uh, it's not. High hat. High hat. Top hat is what you put on your head. <laughs> like with a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be you. But I could use one of those too. Uh, you think? <laughs> Sir Top from the Hat or what? How, how did you say his name? Huh? Sir Top from the Hat. <laughs> how do you say his name? Sir Top. Yeah, yeah. That's from Thomas Tingen. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it. I think that's his name. Okay, yeah, I like this color. It's kind of a nice, it's a little bit of burnt orange in here too. Burnt orange, burnt um, quinacridone, Nicolazzo gold, and quinacridone, burnt orange, and white, and a bleach titanium. Just kind of all the colors. These conacridones are so nice. The reason I really like them is because they're transparent. And so they make really beautiful glazes and they mix so well. They just, they make the most beautiful mixes. And uh, you, you can't, you can't get the same transparency when you mix them with other color, you know, mix, try to recreate them you know, with other colors, it just doesn't quite come out the same. They're not as vibrant. So I'm going to get some ultramarine blue and burnt umber. This is that brown tone. And I'm going to create that shadow that's right here. It comes down. I'm putting it through that wet paint. So it's, it's picking up and mixing with it. Ultramarine blue, burnt umber, equal parts, just about. Wiping that brush off. We need to use the lighter color. Can blend it up. I'm just using this all wet, and that way I can hopefully get it in the first time around. I won't have to do a whole lot of finagling with it later. A little bit of a highlight there, a little bit of a highlight here. We'll just let that dry there. Let's keep on going here with the handle. So using that kind of brownish gold. 
that original color that we were working with. This area is a little bit more shadowed right there. And then inside, there is kind of a brown. Well, it's probably dark. It's a little enamel mug. Go ahead and get it nice and dark. And then I'm just wiping my brush off and just pulling through this dark, fresh paint here, pushing it around with the tip of the brush. There we go. And then I'm going to grab some of that lighter color, do it up here on this half of the handle. This is probably going to be the harder part of the the whole thing. So just kind of know that going in, take your time with it. You could always do this handle a solid, like a darker color, and then do this a solid lighter color and just let that be it. You know, you don't have to go into all the details that I'm doing here. So just kind of know that you, it's your painting, you know, you know your own skill level. So you know, don't feel like you have to take on something that's more going to cause you headaches. You know, it's good to challenge yourself. Try things that are a little outside your skill set. But at the same time, when you're very first learning, I, f I feel like it's better to choose projects that are easier just so you get comfortable and confident with what you're doing. And then you can always challenge yourself later as you progress right and you can always practice on you know paper and notebooks and stuff like that right until you get confident with certain techniques and things adding a little bit more highlight there or the walls or whatever you know whatever you're comfortable <laughs> practicing on whatever you know, whatever is available to you don't tell your mom i said that <laughs> Here. Can I get some angry letters from parents? Yeah, that was just hypothetical. All right, getting white, pure white this time. Trying to get some that's not dried up. There we go. And I still had a little bit of color in my brush, so it's kind of changing it just slightly. But this area up here is really bright. Notice how Angela put a spell on the canvas and made it spin around. Mm-hmm. I put a spell in it. Yeah, I'm just being silly. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's something that people, even though it's obvious, sometimes don't think about. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, go ahead and turn it if it's easier to right. get a better angle. Yeah. You know, if you're left handed or right handed right. or something, you know, it doesn't have to sit in one spot. Right. Yep. I'm going to get some of the, I'm going to get some. Uh, Gold here, a little bit of brown, a little bit of that Indian yellow, brown, and go right along that edge right here and just tap in the shadow along this bottom of the handle here. There's that little rolled edge that's facing away from the light. So I'm just going to tap where it touches that wet white paint to blend it a little bit and pull it around there. Continue it on down right here. And then the white 
is just a little bit white right here. And right along that outside edge right here. I really need a smaller brush, though. This brush is too big, so I'm touching into other areas that I don't want to be messed with. And in. that smaller brush would be called what? Number one. Yeah. Okay, I thought it was Phil. <laughs> but number one round. Okay. Number one round. Okay. AKA Phil. Okay, so this has been sitting here a while. It's starting to get a little bit dry. I'm going to dab it into my water and make sure that all of these that have been sitting here a while don't dry out on me before I get to clean them out really well. Don't ever leave your brushes setting in your water. I used to do that, and I ended up with my entire lit thing of brushes with cracks in the handles. That's just that's what happens because the water gets up into it soaks through and it gets into this wood handle here and the wood expands as the water seeps into it and then it cracks the paint then you end up with paint handles that are all cracked and they can loosen too it can loosen the glue and you can end up with brush handles that are loose and wobbly and that's not good so don't do it but also don't let them dry out. So just going to make sure that you're checking on them every now and then, dipping them back in the water to make sure they're... Okay, so I want to set up right here where that overlaps and then make sure that that bottom edge there is dark. Okay, not bad. We'll let that dry. This is dry, so I'm going to get a little bit more white again and maybe just a touch of yellow. So it's picking up that light and white will pick up the light of the objects around it. So um, it's like a mirror almost. So if you've got this yellow light shining on this white mug right here, this part might have a little bit of a yellow tone to it. These areas here, they're around this, these leaves, they're picking up that gold from the leaves. So, for those who can't draw, like me. Yes, I have traceables of these available. So, whatever we're working on here, all of the paintings that we do, we I make traceables and we post those on my Patreon page. It's a dollar, no, two dollars now. Went up this year. Two dollars a month for all of the traceables. So, as many downloads as you want. Um, Per, per month, so. Back to February 2017. Hundreds. Yeah. Literally hundreds of traceables. Of traceables for $2. Yeah. And, and uh, at the $5 level, they get access to the reference videos. photo. And the, yes, and the reference photos, okay. the finished paintings. Um, yeah, and a bonus video. And the bonus video once a month. Which was a And cow. all of the older videos. Yeah, I'll show you the one we did this month. We did this for our bonus video this month. It's Cal. He turned out really cute. So the bonus videos are like more advanced. They're kind of a step up from our normal videos. They're usually about five hours to six hours long. Um, we do them in one once a month, one setting. And then our challenge videos are for the $10 level. And those are um, all month long. So we work on this uh, week after week uh, until they're finished. And those ones take about six to eight hours usually. So they're a little bit longer and even more in depth than the bonus video. So there's a bunch of them. You can see on my Instagram page, you can go back through and see kind of what we've done. Um, uh, we, I have pretty much all the paintings that we've been doing listed on my Instagram page. 
um, including the Patreon one. So that's a good place to go and just kind of see everything. And if you see one that you're like, oh, where's that? I haven't seen that on YouTube. Well, that's probably a Patreon one. So it'll say in the description of it, of the image where, you know, where you can find it. So now Patreon, like we said, you get access to all of the past bonus videos. So if you sign up for the $5, you get all the past ones also. Right. right. And Patreon is a monthly calendar month subscription. So right now while we're doing this video, it's the 26th of September. So you would, if you join today, you get charged today for September and then you get charged for October or on October 1st. Right. It so charges just, for the full month. So, right. So we're just giving you a heads up on that. Yeah. You might want to wait until. And if you're doing this in the future. September 1st. Consult your calendar. <laughs> if we still have them in the future, do we yeah, have calendars somebody, in the future? Somebody left me a comment the other day, and they, and because I had said something about like, if you're watching in 2020, then you know, in March 2020, then you're you know, the contest is over or something. I think we were running a contest, and then she was like, "Oh, it is March 2020." <laughs> like, that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm really loving it so far. I think we're making pretty good progress. We've got pretty good highlights here. I like the values that we've got going on in the mug here. I think we got spot on pretty much with the color. So I'm pretty happy with that, the color and the tone. Um, we need to add a little bit of a shadow right here with this, these leaves are. Um, so this is dry now. So what we'll do is we're just going to um, use our and it's gold so i'm going to get this quinacridone gold and it's the color of our leaf right so if you ever you know wonder what your shadow colors should be um it's uh depending on what it is but um you take the like with white it's pretty much always going to be the color that is um right up next to it you know so i have loaded it just on the tip of the brush and that way I can kind of control where it's going. I'm just going to push it into these corner areas here and add that gold to that edge of the leaf there. And that's probably too goldish. I don't like that color too much. So I'm going to add some brown to it. Maybe even a little bit of blue. Blue is a great shadow color. Always pull blues in. So here's that same gold, but now I've added a little bit of blue to it. That's going to be better. Yeah, blue and brown. Yeah, on your uh, more natural looking. On your beach scene that you did with the crashing waves. Uh huh. You used dirty shadow blue. Dirty shadow blue is that the name of it? Well, that's what you called it. I did. So yeah. Oh, there you go. But it, that's an interesting color, though. I would have never thought about blue for a shadow. Yeah. Yeah, blue. Blue is a cool color. It works really well for any kind of shadows. It's just, I'm going to just take some water now and just kind of push that around a little bit. Pull off some of the color off where I don't want it because it's not really up above this leaf right here. It's just down in this area right there. Well, there is a little bit. I actually think there's a chip in the mug right there on what I'm seeing. Just blending that out a little bit. Okay, so this this and the handle, probably some of the harder parts of the painting. The Getting the shadows right can tend to be a little bit tricky. So I just kind of know that going in and... Take your time with it, practice it. I'm going to go back in with that background color. Just dab over, blend that in a little bit. Okay, I think that's good. We'll just let that set. If it doesn't dry the way we want it, we can always go back in and add more layers to it later. This is my background color. Oops. And then there is a chip in this mug right here. So if we want to do that, I'm going to get the burnt umber, burnt sienna, 
and burnt orange here. I'm do look at ship right here out of that mug. It's actually kind of so dark that it doesn't look like um, a different color. So I'm making it a little bit more rusty color just so that it makes more sense. Um, it doesn't disappear against that bark color down there. I'm getting a little bit of black. I'm just going to put it up right there, dab off that edge. And just kind of chip that enamel away a little bit right there. And then we can do a little bit right in here. There's some on that edge. There's a little chip right here. And that part of the mug. Let's go ahead and use the ultramarine blue and black. I'm going to use this. I may switch to a smaller, like a round brush. Maybe easier to use. Probably should have kind of a medium round here. This one's a little bit small, but. We'll make it work. I always use the largest brush that you can fit comfortably into the space. So like for this one, I could probably have used a little bit wider brush that would have fit this whole rim width to do this, but we're fine. I'm just going to do the darker color first along that bottom edge, and then I'm going to put another color up at the top for the highlight. So if you're drawing this, one thing that you want to watch is that the this curve and this curve should be the same, right? So watch that. This curve and this curve, this curve, this curve will all be the same um, curve arc, right? So that's where I think people get off when they draw um, circular objects like this. Sometimes you, your tendency will be to flatten out the bottom of the cup a little bit or something. And then you end up with um, an object that doesn't look exactly right or doesn't sit right something will look a little bit off and you try to figure out what it is and be hard to figure out. And that's one thing that I would check first. And this opening here is oval. It's not a circle. If it was, it was, if it was facing straight onto us, it would be a circle, right? But as it tilts away from us, that circle becomes an oval and it becomes more and more of an oval as you know as you get farther away so we're like right in here somewhere where it's a it's still pretty round but it's not a circle add a little bit of brown as we get over on this side here
And this rim actually gets a little bit narrower up here because we're not seeing the front of it. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I may have to correct the inside of that a little bit. All right, our inside uh, is more blue, so the inside of the mug is more of a blue color. So I'm going to use the ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber or kind of a gray blue. That's a little bit too dark, maybe. I don't know, it might be right about right. I'm going to add a little bit more brown so it's not so in your face blue. Brown will neutralize it and make it more gray. Somebody asks if ultramarine blue is transparent. Yeah, it is. It's it's pretty transparent. I think it's considered translucent. Let me look at that. But yeah, it's it's more here's opaque, transparent, so it's it's well on the transparent side. I th I find that the colors that mix better are transparent. Um it's just kind of a, I don't know if that's true or not, but it just feels like that's, feels like it's true. Sure, there's probably some scientific reason, but all right, that looks good. Looks good. Um, so on the inside of that, I'm going to get some of this brown and just kind of muddy up this color a little bit darker. And just kind of add some kind of scuffs to the inside of this mug. Up toward the top is more white. I have to let this dry because this is just mixing. I'm going to have to let that dry. It's not, not one to add, add, accept any more paint. Uh, let's see. I feel like I got a little bit off right here. I'm going to fix this handle just slightly right here. Bring that in a little bit right there. And let's go ahead and get some of the quinacridone burnt orange, a little bit of gold. Add it to the blue. I'm gonna maybe some white. So weird, all these colors are like looking the same when I get them down here next to each other. foam area for coffee right at the top there. I'm going to get some ultramarine blue, a little bit of purple, a little bit of black, and this color. Somebody has asked the difference between transparent and translucent. Mm -hmm. So transparent 
means that almost all of the uh, light goes directly through them. Right. So glass is transparent. Right. Translucent, translucent allows some of the light to go through them. So like a frosted glass and plastic and things like that can be translucent. So it's just the amount of light allowed to go through or reflect off of. Well, thank you, honey. Do I get a gold star? <laughs> no? Yes, thank you for having explaining that for me. Thank you. And thank you for using mathematical terms over there. You, <laughs> you know what it does for me. <laughs> arcs and things like that. <laughs> okay, so that, and then I'm going to use this color, this ultramarine blue, black color here, and get some white, mix up. Give it a light gray. Press that brush flat. I think I'm gonna get actually a smaller brush. Let's get the no, I don't want this one. I want the I want this brush. My number one round here. And maybe a little bit more of that ultramarine blue. I put it right along that rim there and I'm going to dry brush this so I don't have I mean my brush is wet but I'm very lightly dragging it so that it's catching the texture of the coffee lip there so this is kind of a medium medium blue Right down the middle there on this side, it's more, it's closer to the top. Think about where our light's coming from. So here our light is back here, so it's going to be closer to this side. And then on this side, it's going to be closer to this side, because that side is closer to the light. Okay, then get my lighter color here. Get a little bit of glaze. This is why you could even use their zinc white. Because zinc's white's transparent, it'll be a little bit softer look. There's a lot of blue in it, not shadowing a black rim, so this is not going to be like white, white. It's going to be pretty dark still, but I want to highlight on it. We have a question. Yes. Do you know if liquid clear 
is the same as glazing liquid. I have no idea what that is. Never heard of it. I have not heard of it either. It, it, I would just have to, you'd have to read up on it. Have to Google the, it? Yeah. Go, the glazing, the, the thing that I like about the golden glazing medium that I use is that it has an extender in it. Most glazing mediums or mediums in general won't won't have that. So getting some of that darker color and just adding that back in here. The extender just helps it give you a little bit extra time when you're laying it down to it doesn't dry immediately on contact like some glazes do. You can work it just a little bit before it dries. Okay, adding some ultramarine blue and black here. I'm gonna go back here now and kind of add a thin layer of that wherever you need it. Okay. Okay, so chat has helped out. Thanks. Liquid clear is used for oils. Ah. Uh, which we don't use. I've never used oils. No, no, I am not the person to ask. I mean, we do use, I mean, we used olive oil last night. True. And we use oil in our cars. True. But that's about it. Right, but not in our painting. Mm-hmm. No, I've never used oils. Just never. I've never even tried them. I mean, I might. I really liked them. Who knows? Right. <laughs> All right. Here, darkening up that bottom edge there. I haven't let that dry. We'll go ahead and put a chip in the mug here. Let's get a little bit of this burnt orange, burnt umber. Chip in the mug right here. And I'm going to use this blue black mixture. Ooh. Color there. Get some. Gosh, this is drying up on me. Air is blown. Palette. <clears throat> if it's pickle, I hear you. Fitz is like right under outside the studio barking at us. I don't know if they can hear it or not. I'm gonna get a little bit of green and add that to my ultramarine blue, make a kind of a turquoisey blue color. Add some white. And some of that darker color. Let's get some purple, black, the coffee color. Let's get 
add streaks of that through this. Okay, and I'm going to get a little bigger brush, keep the angle brush here, and do burnt umber, or burnt sienna, I mean, some of the quinacridone gold. I'm going to lay that in. How you doing, hon? No, this is going long. Over two hours. It's now. going good. I'm... Yeah, I still haven't gotten the leaves yet. That's okay. They'll have their turn. <laughs> they can wait patiently there. Okay, and then get this blue that we mixed. Some ultramarine blue. And some zinc white here. Just not wanting to add too much water to it. Sprayed it, just got all soupy. Got a blue question. Mm -hmm. How do you know when to use ultramarine blue versus thalo blue? Ultramarine blue's got more purple in it, so if I want more of a shadowy tone or a, more of a reddish blue, I'll use it. And then if if I want more of a teal blue, the thalo blue has more of those colors it's closer to green so it's more turquoise it's better for turquoises and stuff like that i almost had it here but it was i mean it really didn't matter too much i didn't think it would really make that much of a difference here there's not that much area here that would require a thala blue but you could have used it there and in this area instead of the ultramarine blue. This is not blending for me, so that's just because my paint was too thin when I put it down. So I just gotta let this dry a little bit. It's it's close, but not exactly where I want it to be, but I'm just gonna have to let it dry. So let's go ahead and work on our foam over here. Oh, that's drying. Let me get a little bit of blue. A bit of this blue that we've been using with my white, my unbleached titanium. I'm going to go along the mug there. Just tap kind of bits of color. We've already got that kind of orangey color back there. So we could even use the zinc white for this if we want it to be a little softer. I'm just going to tap, tap, tap. And then where I want a circle, I'm just going to kind of paint around, leave that dark area. And tap around it. It'll be a softer look than painting the dark in. It's 
some of the brighter blue over here. Over there. This is drying a little bit. I can add a little bit more of the brighter blue in here. Oops, still not dry. You see how I was lifting there? This is just since the background is not dry. Just gonna put a little color on there and let it set. Get some of that quinacridone burnt orange. Mm, white, make that kind of orangey color that we had going on in that. Really could be a little bit of brown. Well, whatever color you want your foam to be for your coffee. So well, maybe a little bit more brown. Yeah, that works. I've covered over all my dark areas, so I'm just going to have to put them back in. It's okay. Mm, I want this a little bit darker. And there's some yellow, so picking up some of the sky color in the reflections. Yellow white here. Right, let me get it there. I'm amazed. You're amazed at what? Uh, your painting. Oh, thank you. Good. You seem to be surprised by that. Uh, <laughs> you hardly ever, like, comment on them. Well, you do, I guess, sometimes. Okay. Well, I usually Dots. comment on the painter, not the painting. That's right. Yeah, exactly. But the, the painter is amazing, too. <laughs> Good. Thanks. Fishing for compliments. <laughs> that's what that's called. Blue and white here. This is in here, so just kind of using this, scumbling it up in here. To
And then a more dark color over here. Get some glaze medium. And just use that to push the color around a little bit. Now that we've got the right color underneath, it's going to show up better for us. So if somebody wants to know how do you get the cup and the coffee to look so shiny other than sorcery? Uh, the cup and the coffee. So in here, it's it's all about your light areas. So you need these little pops of the light areas against the really dark. Those light areas are what will make it look shiny. So I'm going to use this and get some more of that orange. Let me get some of this yellow sky color too. And now I'm just kind of working those edges and kind of blending over onto that blue, blending that out. Okay, I don't think I'm going to mess with that anymore because I'm pretty happy with it. So I do want to maybe do one more layer onto the coffee itself because it's kind of looking a little flat. It's not, it's not solid. So get some blue and burnt umber here. A little bit of purple, maybe. This is where I can But yeah, the shine the shine is all about the your contrast. If you've got enough contrast, you're gonna be able to create that shininess. I'm having this really dark against this is automatically going to bring it forward and make it look shiny. I think, I think in general, I've seen, I don't know if this is true or not, amongst other, but I mean, I've, I find that like getting the contrast right can be really difficult for, um, for beginners who are learning to paint because, um, uh, well, it was the hardest, one of the hardest things for me. So maybe that's why I'm generalizing, but I do see it a lot also in, you know, beginner artists when they, when they, you know, share their work with me, that a lot of it can be a little bit flat and the flatness comes from not giving enough contrast. So that's one thing that when you, when I, uh, when I work, um, especially when I would do like, you know, fine art paintings or something for a gallery, a lot of times I would, at the very end of the painting, go back in and glaze one more time with dark and, and go back in and highlight everything one more time with some highlights. And that usually will like just bump up all the contrast across the board enough to just really like bring it to the next level was always was happy with with it after I would do that so getting some of the dark here adding that edge of the mug there and there's some almost white over here that I haven't done yet Blended, okay. Right. And then I did want to um, darken up the edges here just a little bit. There's a, there's a little bit of a highlight. The white is shining into the mug over here, so we're seeing a little bit of 
the white hitting it on the inside right here. So I'm just getting it kind of thinned out white here and just gonna brush it along here and kind of along this top edge just a little bit. There we go. It's actually right in here too. I need to round that out a little bit. I'm seeing that that's a little bit. Darken up right here. I'm going to go ahead and kind of use this dirty stuff that's on my brush and just kind of run some scuffs along the inside of this. Move on that side a little bit. Using paper towel to kind of take off some of the extra there. Here we go. All right. Let's go ahead and work on these leaves. So I'm gonna use the burnt orange. Let's go ahead and use the liner brush first and put in our lines for the centers of all these. Let me get a little bit of magenta, burnt orange. Burnt umber. You'll want to thin down your paint quite a lot. I'm going to add a little glaze so that it sticks well. And then I'm going to run these lines through. Oh, my camera. Not all of them are going to have really defined lines. Like this one doesn't really have a lot of lines, but it's got some of this color kind of in here. So I'm just going to kind of scumble a little bit of this color in here and just scrub it in. Scumbling is technically white or lighter color over the top of a darker color. So it's just not that, but you get the idea. <clears throat>
this to attach here across. Not try I'm trying not to put this on too cleanly. I feel like the the more kind of messy it is, the better with some of these. Not necessarily messy, but just a little bit looser. Kind of I tend to like the look of it better. Looks a little bit more realistic to me. If it's not super clean, nothing in nature is, you know, exactly the same color all the way along the vein or leaf, you know, so kind of go in and out of the color by kind of doing a looser line like a broken line skips around a little bit with the colors it just tends to look a little bit more natural to me than a perfectly smooth line that's the same color all the way down so that's why I'm kind of doing it in like little dashes and dabs here some strategery We watch way too much Saturday Night Live. I like the coffee cup. I like it a lot. Turned out really cool. All right, so let's get some of this brown here. This is just a burnt umber, burnt orange kind of mixture. Maybe a little bit of burnt sand in there. I'm not sure. I didn't really pay attention when I mixed it. I'm going to get a little bit of orange now. What? Mix that with it. What brush were you just using? That was the uh, 18 knot short liner. All right, thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go dab in some of this orangey color in some places. Go away, fly. Somebody told me the other day that she thought I was Sonia Mancuni for a long time. She said she thought it was my videos were her doing doing it in um, off camera. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> our voices are totally different, but uh, our styles seem kind of different too. But Cinnamon's a friend of mine, so your hair is a little different. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just funny, but. Apparently, me and her husband are interchangeable. Yeah. Well, she said that's how she finally figured it out because because your your name is different than his. And she's like, okay, yeah, they but, might not be the same person after all. Yeah, but they, that hasn't stopped many people from calling me John. John, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he gets it too. I'm sure he gets called Mark all the time. He gets called John all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he hates when that happens. <laughs> All right, making some yellow, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, a little bit of the unbleached titanium and titanium white here. I'm going to use this on this leaf here. Yeah. This is a quarter inch angle. Hmm. Yeah, 
too much paint on my brush here, but. I am going to get some dark because I'm just realizing this does not touch the cup. So I'm going to go around it. There's the tiniest bit of shadow on the cup, so I'm going to leave that shadow on the cup there, but clean up around it there. That light doesn't touch over the top of it. In fact, I think I'm going to switch to this brush. We'll see if I can get, I might not be able to get up to the corners is all with this, but see if I can. This is the quarter inch blender. I'm gonna get better texture with that, but it's not gonna work. I'm be able to get up to these edges and clean them up a little bit. Okay, so just adding a little bit of highlights here and there. This one's kind of our lightest leaf, it seems like. More in the sun. You get some of that stem color and put that back in. Step back through. And then I'm going to dab in some of this dark color to add some freckles to our leaf. Some of that gold, maybe some of the monochrome gold. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. She says leave it and then. I do that all the time. Okay, now I mean it. Let's get some white and some yellow oxide here. How long have we been going? Two and a half hours, so we're over three hours today. Okay, it's okay. Indian yellow, white, yellow oxide here. Basically, just yellow. Get some yellow here. And if you're just like mine, you're going to have some really fugly edges here because we've gone over the top of them. Um, just totally fine. We're just cleaning them up now. Can you say that on YouTube? Fugly? <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't even think about what that means. Okay. Yeah, probably shouldn't say that. Sorry, kids. Perfect. 
I really, I really never even occurred to me that that's the origin of that. Honestly, <laughs> wonder how many times I've said that inappropriately. Probably a lot. I don't really recall it in your shows. Okay. Good. But it, it's you know it could be appropriate <laughs> for your edges. Hmm. It could be appropriate for the edges of your leaves. I don't know. <laughs> White here. It's not covering, get white, and make it more opaque. Actually, these leaves could take some, some uh, splattering. I may do that. I'm gonna do like that. Get my toothbrush out and get into here this color that was my some burnt umber and water. So you need it thinned out if you're splattering. Give us those little freckles on our leaves. We need this. And I've just covered my mug because I didn't want anything to get on my mug. So you cover your sky too, but it's not too much in the line of fire. Okay, oops, stick it. Take it on there. Went under my hand. Okay. Some of that yellow, white. Mixture. This leaf has got a lot of white in it. Chair is very squeaky. Yeah. Spencer does too. I'm just going to brush it over the top of that color. It's going to tone in everything down a little bit, washing it out. I'm going to highlight the connection there between the two leaves. Highlight a lot. The creases there. Indian gold here, a little bit more gold color. 
There we go. And you can you can um, do your little freckles multiple times. So you know if you cover over too much of it here, you can always go back in and add more of the the freckles later. Because yeah. this is going to cover up some of them. Doing that, you know, going back over them here. Yeah, that Indian yellow is really the key there. This is really helping us gold look a little bit more gold. We get some white. Get some of the anachrodone gold. This area here needs to be rounded out. going in between the veins here. That part would be like kind of raised up. The veins will kind of be depressed a little bit. So they're sad. No. <laughs> they're just maybe down a little bit farther. So with the, the lights catching these ones in the middle where they were raised up just a little bit more. How you doing, hon? Hanging in there? Of course. Good. Thanks for hanging in with me. Oh, no. My pleasure. On the weekends. I know you're giving up valuable Xbox time right now. <laughs> I'm resting my body for the, uh, for more, uh, paver laying tomorrow. Uh-oh. Okay. It's a big deal. You need to get Spencer out there helping you. You got free manual labor. You're not using it. It's like, come on. laying paver stones in our garden outside. It's looking really good. You've uh, turned into quite the handyman this this year. It's it's okay. I've learned a lot for sure this year. And uh built yeah. in our garden boxes and all that. I was you know, I get frustrated sometimes when it doesn't come out as I expected. Mm -hmm. But uh, watching Adam Savage, you know, the old Mythbuster guy, he's got a YouTube channel and mm -hmm. he's been a maker for decades. I mean, he worked on the sets of Star Wars movies and things like that. Oh, wow. And obviously he did the whole Mythbusters, Mythbusters thing. Show. And, you know, he was doing a Q&A and his advice was just expect to fail. I mean, mm. you know, nobody is going to go out and do it exactly right the first time. And so, I like that. you know, go out, expect to fail, 
learn from the experience and, and go on and try again. You know, don't get so frustrated by it. So like, okay, you know, it's the idea, the concept is there. I mean, it, a lot of it is pretty good. You know, there's things definitely would do differently or better. Uh, obviously, I'm not an expert uh, favor layer. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I'm having fun. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Yeah, it's not like going to be another career for me, for sure. But, you know, I enjoy learning and doing. And, okay. and sometimes I have to buy more tools to, you know, to to do it. I know so. you're sorry. It's sad about that. Oh, yeah, of course. I'd rather buy you have to buy another power tool. Buy tools and then pay somebody else to do it, and they have to get the tools and keep them. True. So anyways, well, that's a that's a good philosophy for painting too, though. You know, anytime oh, yeah. you're trying any kind of new en- endeavor, I always you know encourage my this, you know, students just be like, you're probably not going to be that good at it at first, you know, and that's okay. That is totally normal. Were you very good at skiing the first time you did it or playing the piano the first time you did it? You know, I mean, like anything that you're going to try, it's going to take some effort until you're going to get proficient at it. It's just a normal part of life. I mean, I wasn't very good at eating at first. (laughs) Now you're an expert. And well, I keep practicing. Well, but, you know, I'm just saying that that with art, for some reason in the art world, and it, I feel like it's unique to art for some reason, uh, I think there's just a, there's kind of an exclusivity or sort of a mystery to, to art and people. Uh, and I think that the art world has definitely, you know, fostered that, <laughs> um, you know, that the, the elite get to do art and, and it's not for the everyday person, you know, and, um. Uh, I even get comments about it. I've gotten a comment from this crazy person and get comments from this person. I don't know if it's the same person or what, but they're, you know, just people like, you know, how, like saying, you know, I'm making it too easy for people to paint, you know, that it, it and it's like, it's like, how dare I'm, you uh, yeah, secrets. exactly. Right. Well, and it's like it, well, and their, you know, their thing was uh, against traceables, you know, and uh, my thing is like, if it helps you, you know, it's like wearing training, you know, using training wheels, you're not going to use it forever. But when you're first learning, yeah, you need to have help, you know, whatever help helps you get off the ground, whatever helps you get, you know, to the next level, by all means, use it. Don't feel like you're cheating to, you know, use the tools that are available to you, you know? So, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I really dislike the art elite elitism in our, in the art world. It just, I'm not for that at all. I, I, I hate it. And I've, I've gotten a feel for it. I've been on that side of it. You know, I've been in gallery shows. I've gone, we went to the governor's mansion and, you know, we, we, I was in a calendar with a bunch of other, artist from Arkansas and uh, and we were all signing each other's uh, books, you know, uh, the the calendar books and going through and, you know, I'd sign, they'd, you know, I'd ask for somebody's signature, they'd sign, they'd sign it and then I'd sign theirs, you know, it was like that the whole night, you know, people were like, oh, here, find your picture and sign it for me, you know, and we were all, you know, just really excited and to be there. And then there was one dude that was thought he was better than everybody else. And I don't know what, you know, I mean, I'm sure he'd been in the art world a long time and he was probably very much more famous than any of the rest of us, but he, his attitude was so demeaning to everybody. It was so ridiculous. And, you know, went up, I didn't know what to expect, you know, but, and I was just like, Hey, will you sign this? You know, and he, he signed it. And then, uh, he looked at my name tag And walked away. Didn't ask me to sign his. It was just like, oh, I don't know you. So you don't, you know. And it's like, that's the, that is the art world. (laughs) Like, welcome to the art world there. It's like, if you do not have a, you know, it's very, very elite. And very, very like, uh, you know, club mentality. If you are not in, then you're not 
worthy of my attention at all, you know? And so I just, um, like, I'm never going, I don't want anybody to ever feel that way about their art. You know, I feel like all art is important and yeah, I may not be the most famous or, you know, you may not ever be known for your art, but if you enjoy it, do it. And, you know, your art expression is just as important as anybody else's. So I don't know. Don't let. Right. And like earlier in the show, uh, or earlier in the show, before the show, you were watching some kind of a round table with actors. Right. And they had, you know, people and in time and time again, they were like, you know, what made impression to them was the really famous big actors right. would acknowledge them when, yes, they, like, when, when they were was, nobody, when they were nobody in first yeah. time on a movie set, right. they would acknowledge them and engage them and encourage them and talk to them. Yeah. When they were scared. And just right. Out. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, it's the same way. I mean, we're in this together. It's, yeah. it's not a competition. It's not a race. It's not a, you know, I'm a better than you. It's let's share this experience together. Let's help each other and let's go on about it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'll never forget that. It's just like that feeling of, oh, I guess I'm not, you know, important. And I I thought to myself, I just, I don't, you know, I never, that's just not me. I'm never going, you know, I don't want to ever do that to other people. You know, that's just not right. And fine, he didn't, you know, I mean, it's fine. It's not like, you know, maybe he's sorry now. You've seen my YouTube channel. Yeah, you're like, showing him, honey. I'm showing him. I don't even remember who it was. I couldn't even tell you his name. See, there you go. So there you go. Exactly. So I, I forget. I forgot him. I'm over it. I'm just so over it. But, it it's, yeah. the, it's the it's person amazing. with the broken arm because they were patting themselves on the back so much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, he was probably on the cover or something. I don't know, you know. Okay, so. Adding some darker smudges in here. And I think we're about done. Yeah. Kind of just right. messing up. And so up. that's the 15 minute mark. No, I think we're I'm pretty much shiny. I'm gonna everything's going in the dunk in the tub. I'm gonna sign it. Yeah. <laughs> Still means absolutely nothing. I'm gonna sign it down here. There you go. Oh, yeah, super chat. Yay. Yeah, we got the super chats. Plural. Wow. Yes. Okay, so this first super chat was from Kristen, and she had like a dancing kitty emoji that said thank you. Oh. <laughs> thank you, Kristen. Then we had from Carol. And she had an emoji that had uh wow a green pear looking character. It says you are amazing. Awesome. Love it. So no, that one was for me. This is green and yellow here and white. And I'm just using the tip of my brush and dragging it through. Go ahead. And then the last one was from Mama and um. said, Thank you for all you do, Angela and Mark. Love spending my Saturday afternoons with you. X's and O's. Thanks, Mom. So thanks, Mama <laughs> and Carol and Kristen. And no, that is not my mom. For all the support. And <laughs> could be, I guess. It could be. <laughs> it's awesome. Yes, thank you. That's very, very kind of you. Very kind. Super generous. Yes. Always amazed. You can get super chats. Very sweet. All right. <clears throat> and of course, thank you to all the Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely amazing. Yes. Too. I mean, I've noticed that we're getting close to 3,000. Yeah, we broke 3,000 last month. Just insane. Yeah. Yeah. 
So thank you, thank you, thank you. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, I mean it now. I'm signing it. Mm -hmm. Just keep seeing stuff. Like I said, it was a 15-minute mark back then, so go get another cup of coffee, come back. We'll still be, <laughs> we'll still be going. That's fine. No, but seriously, you know, below this video is the uh, list of the materials used, links to Amazon, Blick, the brush guys uh, for to purchase brushes. There's a discount code for 5% off called Angel Fine Art. Check that out. Then links to social medias, all that stuff down below the video. Yes. If you use the links out of our videos, it helps support our channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra when you pay for your items, but it uh, gives us a little kickback bonus for sending them, sending you their way. Yeah. So like on Prime Day, oh, use, the, uh, use the Angela Amazon link and there then you go. Prime away Yeah, and support the channel. No cost to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Just saying. Awesome. Awesome way to... You don't have to purchase what's in her store. Right. It's just using that link. Yes. So thank you for they those who do it, that. They track it to the... A re kind of like a referral. Yeah, it is like a referral kind of thing. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of the burnt umber blue. White. Here, and I'm going to just... Yeah, just a little bit more of the highlights to this area up there. And this, and this is the normal process to be, you know, you know, very serious about it. You know, normally when Angela is doing a painting for somebody or something, you know, she'll do the painting, she'll walk away, she'll come back, look at it. She'll put it up in the living room for a few yeah. days, look yeah. at it, different lights, different angles. Go back to it, add some more stuff to it. Yeah, so you see different things. The the YouTube tutorial video is a different format, so she tries to do everything at one time, which isn't very unusual. That's not a normal process to paint. So we encourage you to do the that practice. You know, do your yeah. painting, walk away from it, come back, look at it. Yeah, just kind of know, do it in a couple, you know, two or three settings, and that's you know. Probably you'll have better results with it if you kind of step away from it time to time. Because you see things differently from a, over time. So, just adding some little highlights here and there. I went in and added those little bright pops of, of uh, green to the mosses and yeah pretty pretty happy with that i think we got it fairly close if we look at the reference photo in this i think we got our colors pretty close i think i probably could do maybe one more layer of the bright yellow up in this upper corner if we wanted to really brighten it up um just slightly so maybe do that since we've got the color here and might as well right we're here I'm seeing it. Let's do it. Just a little bit of white, a lot of the yellow, cadmium yellow light, and just pull down. Let's pull down like a sunlight almost. And honestly, there is kind of a fog on the mugs here. So if you wanted to, you could use like some zinc white. Um, make sure everything's completely dry. Get a little bit of that zinc white and uh, maybe a tiny bit of the yellow. And just kind of go over this whole area just slightly. Just to haze it out. We already have kind of that look here. I think we did it sort of when we put that in, but we can do a little bit over the coffee mug too to kind of create that haze that we're getting from that sunlight hitting the mug. If a person doesn't have zinc white, what could they use? Um, well, the t titanium white 
uh, with glaze, it would work too. It's just, um, it's going to be a little bit more transparent. So you just want to watch that and make sure I'm not adding too much of the white. But all right. Um, okay. One thing I'm seeing too. So this is this is the point. At, Mark teases me because I do do this all the time. But uh, this is the point where you know at the very end I'll stop and I'll look at the reference photo in the little uh, on the screen. I've got like a monitor shot of the um, of my painting plus the reference. Basically, what you're seeing, I'm seeing on the small screen over here. And so I'm noticing that right here, this this has got a lot of that yellow color in that moss. So I'm going to add that bright pop of yellow right over here. Okay, maybe a little bit right here. It's easier to me for me to see it um, in this smaller screen. It's almost like stepping back away from the painting and helps me get that perspective of distance that I don't get when I'm just sitting right here looking at it. So, okay, I think that's pretty good. We'll go ahead and stop there and uh, say thank you and give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share it with me on social media. I got all the links down in the description and hope you come back on Tuesday night. We're going to be back uh, with, uh, what are we painting on Tuesday night? Oh, oh, blue flower. Ooh, that's going to be a fun one. That's going to be really pretty. So yeah, join us for that one. It'll be a lot of fun. And we'll, uh, yeah. And like I said, we've got our October schedule out now too. So you can go click on my name or my photo uh, under this video and it'll take you to my um, homepage of my uh, YouTube channel. I just added uh, my autumn playlist to the top like featured uh, playlist section so you can check out all the autumn paintings that I've done over the years and we'll be doing several more this October so hope you like pumpkins <laughs> we'll be doing a few all right thanks guys we'll see you next time thanks for watching Bye.